to another episode of the Higher Level Podcast. Uh, so tonight on the show, joining James Dillon and myself, we have Keir Harvey on. Um, Keir's got an upcoming fight on EFC, and that's on the 6th of November. EFC, Scotland to South Africa, mm-hmm. not a bad time of year to be fi- firing over there. No, it's not at all. Uh, if anything, it's it's lucky we can go, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. It's not even, like it was on the red list not even long ago, it was kind of touching goals we could go. But yeah, all confirmed, we're going to go, wasn't for it. So when you, when you, we obviously got the news about the fight, that, that's in the back of your head, but that's out with your control uh, with COVID situation. And that is that something you just need to you just need to know think about and just focus on training and getting ready. Pretty much. Uh, well, I've not even actually had this fight for too long. Uh-huh. It was only about three weeks ago, ago we got it, and I knew they would have done their research if, they, if they've offered it to us. I knew we could get out to do it, so that wasn't really too much of a stress by that point. But then, in terms of the the notice period that you're. You're pretty much in the gym year round anyway. Aye. You're you're no somebody that's going to need a long camp to get in shape and that. So yeah. for, for that point of view, no concerns or anything there. You were you were re- ready to go. Exactly. I was actually meant to be fighting the day before for uh-huh. Bellator in Dublin, and I got that. That was that was max like twelve thirteen weeks out. Uh-huh. So I knew I was going to be yeah. fighting the start of November for, for ages. Even when that pulled, when that got cancelled, it wasn't actually too long before. I got this new fight, and like I said, you're all. I'm, I'm always in here. I don't have anything else really to be doing. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, and I actually almost prefer a, a two, three week notice. It's like no. you've not got time to think about anything. It's just hit it hard, and then before you can kind of get a bit burnt out, you're you're ready to go. Like I didn't even see see when I, I got that fight, and you know, at first I got, I was like, God, that's close. But at the time you you do you, two or three weeks, you hit it hard, and before you know it, you're like. I'm good to go. Like right. any longer, almost would be at that at that pace would be too much. Aye. So it's just like you don't think about anything else. You accept it. You're excited, and it just all seems to build together. Next thing you know, you're, you're flying out for it. It's, it's brilliant. Is, is that one of the things, James? You can jump in with us as well, we guys. It's a, it is a fine balance. Actually, you don't you want to train hard in the gym <coughs> and be prepared, but there must be always be that concern that you leave the best version of yourself in the gym mm. before the fight. How how fine a balance is that to get right? The, the pro guys should be able to take fights on two weeks notice I think they should always be able to hit the whatever weight class they make um, and they should be in the gym anyway the only guys I kind of let away with that is is like the really really experienced pro guys like guys who have maybe had 25 plus pro fights because uh-huh. they, they can they don't need to be in all the gym in, in the gym in between fights as much they, they kind of already have learnt their craft to an extent they need time to get fit and get the weight down where we, we Keir's still learning all the time. He's, he's at that kind of developmental stage. He's, he's pro career now with five pro fights, so he's he's in all the time anyway. Um, he's he's straight back in after fights. He's he's adding to his game. He's picking up on things and for previous fights and stuff like that. So it, these these are opportunity. You, you need to be in the gym, and if opportunities like this will always come up for guys. There's, when you go on the internet and you see people moaning about unable to get fights, there's opportunities there. Mm-hmm. Most of these guys kind of get fights that suit them that, that's, that's what they're moaning at but pro guys should be in the gym and if the opportunity comes up they should be able to jump at it like, but two out of the three guys we've got in the UFC have been short notice yeah. call ups so the, the pro guys need to be ready for, for whatever comes along um, and Ke- Keir's had that now with, with EFC obviously uh, it's, it's one of the ones as well it's just you never know when the, the big big opportunity or the big chance comes mm. so if you're not ready for it and you, you can't take it then it's it's problematic for any any fighter yeah um, but so in terms of EFC what's uh, where's your travel period when do you actually go out and head out to South Africa I'm assuming very soon so I'll be flying out Sunday right uh, and then which is good, obviously, like a, like a cage warriors or anything here. No, you maybe only go like the, the day before the weigh ins. You'll get there, kind of, you'll cut your weight and weigh in. This is a matter of further travel, so it's good to get. I'll, I'll, I'll have a day traveling and then I'll just get to chill out, do everything there, all the weight cut. And even for coming back, so I'll fight the Saturday and I'm coming home 
Monday and a Tuesday so it's not even like a fight and then we're right out there I'll just get to chill out the Sunday Aye. enjoy a bit of time there and then worry about the travel you know what I mean so it is, it's very ideal and, and obviously as well it's a, a promotion that the gym's familiar with mm. um, <coughs> obviously having like uh, Danny Henry uh, Callum Murray have been out there as well and mm. everybody that was, we've spoke to or when you've mentioned them it's everybody speaks highly AFC so just a fighter as well that opportunity to travel to a country like South Africa go out there and fight for a promotion like AFC um, that the opportunities don't come every day yeah 100% I've never fought outside the UK yep. most of them being in Scotland even getting to fly somewhere aye is, is brilliant because you know it's, you're wanting to fight and build your record a bit you want to go see where you can go along the way Aye. and I was excited to go back to back to Ireland I've been to Ireland before I've been yep. a handful of times to Ireland I've never been to South Africa Aye. and uh, you've, you've, like you said like those guys have been in the past and everyone has glowing reviews about it and I, like, I've not even fought for them yet but just the, dealing with the behind the scenes stuff they've been brilliant they've been so easy to work with uh, Oh, anything you need, you just... It's, it's a good old uh, tour we're dealing with. Uh-huh. And uh, she's been brilliant. Anything we need. Even, like, uh, two days ago, I done. I went on Zoom and I, I done a, a whole concussion baseline test with them. I done it all on my phone. It was, like, balance tests, reactions tests. So they've got a baseline. If, any, if I ever get knocked out <coughs> in the gym or in any AFC fight, they can go back and check that. It's like they don't need to do that, you know? Right. But from what I can tell so much they, they care about you that you value you as a fighter you know when, when I went to fight for Cage Warrior it was just I was the guy being brought in to fight a Cage Warriors guy yep. even yep. when I was, I was matched on Bellator I was coming in to fight the SPG guy he Aye. gets injured and I just get I just get put to the side uh, and so I, I, like I said I've not fought for them yet but I, I feel valued as a fighter Aye. already and that, that means a lot you don't just want to you know you can fight for money wherever you build your record but you want to be valued as a fighter someone you want a promotion to take you in and build you up. Aye. So I think that this will be the promotion for me to do that. And it's that as well, again, with the... So if I obviously think back to some fights uh, early on, like fight, maybe jumping in the car, not to Grange mouth and mm-hmm. stuff like that. Now, getting to jump my plane, fly out to South Africa, it just has that more professional feel about it. Totally. And it does it feel like that to you? You yeah. feel like, right, I actually feel like a professional fighter mm-hmm. now with that side of things. Yeah, it's like... See, even normally all your fights are just booked on like Facebook. Like Facebook, <laughs> like, yeah, I'll take that. But now it's like you need to sit and you need to read through 10 pages of a contract and you need to be switched on and you're saying all that. You know what I mean? It's not just as simple as, yeah, I'll fight that guy. There's a a legit process oh, yeah. to go through all of it. Uh, and it feels more official. You know what I mean? Like it's proper. It's how it should be done. And the other thing as well, if obviously every fighter's dream is going to the UFC and you're getting fight experience, but there is that other side of it as well, that the travelling abroad, dealing with media, doing all that stuff, that, that's all experience you need to gain as well mm. that prepares you for move, moving along to a stage like the UFC. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because if you look at the UFC, they seem to have really model their whole yep. structure off the UFC. And it's like, oh, why would you not? You know Aye. what I mean? Like, I, th- I think even that alone is, is good preparation uh, like you said get used to get used to like the media obligations and like even just travelling even you know even making weight uh, like a, a, a long travel making weight it's, it's different from just yep. you know what I mean going to your local sauna and then just driving an hour to yep. weigh in that could be different too I think that's something I need to get more used to as well it's not always just going to be as easy as sitting in your own house doing everything so it's just all experience building right now for me. Aye, because that's, that's the other thing. Uh, flying does affect your water retention and stuff mm-hmm. like that, doesn't it? Yeah. So is, are you kind of interested to see how that flight affects affects just your body in terms of how the weight cut process is going to go? I mean, I guess we'll see. I'm Aye. not a huge cutter normally, uh-huh. but like I said, if it, if it does hold a bit more, whatever, I, I, can, I can get it off. It's not a worry. No, it's a good thing it's never even like taking a fight or short notice it's never a stress for me oh god what do I weigh I'm, I get to just think about the fight and, and outside factors and, and I know even if one's a bit harder than the other I know at the end of the day I'll make the weight Aye, so it's never a big worry for me no ne- worries about a Paolo Costa experience or anything like mm, nah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, in terms of who's, who's travelling out with you uh, are you flying out there initially yourself or uh, who's coming with me you me and Kieran Reid are going together we'll fly out together and we'll come back together oh, brilliant brilliant and James, obviously you back home. How do you have you got everything in place for him in terms of game planning and ter- just all that side of things with his preparation? 
the prep he was prepping anyway for uh-huh. for the Bellator date. Um and then he's he's been heavy involved with a lot of the Cage Warrior camps and stuff for, for Shanks and stuff. Um it was basically just once we got a got an opponent, making sure we keeping an eye on who he's working with in the gym sparring wise and stuff like that. And there's there's not a lot we needed to in terms of game plan, like Keir's Keir's gonna do what Keir does. Um yeah. and it'll it'll force the other guy to deal with Keir's game. Whereas if he goes in there just worrying about what the, what his opponent can do then sometimes that can get in the way of your own game happening so he's he's prepared to to fight everywhere like every good professional fighter should be we've got some kind of positions and stuff like that with favour obviously made some of the sessions a wee bit more intense just to test where he's at fitness wise and stuff to, to fit in with the three weeks um, but again Keir's not never had any issues with fitness he, he can pr- probably take a fight in a, a few days notice and go the 15 minutes if need be it's, it's, the way his, his style is he's, he's suited for that so j- just being a case of ramping stuff up a wee bit um, keeping on top of the weight and, and a couple of wee bits and pieces with, with drills like that just pushing the pace but nothing massive like he's he's, he's well rounded enough that he can get and win this fight multiple different ways so it'll just be a case of him going over there at, and then finding where he feels comfortable wherever he feels comfortable most likely that the, the opponent won't feel comfortable and then just yeah. keeping it there and then being prepared to last the 15 minutes the guy's an experienced pro yeah. fighter he's had 18 pro fights the Keir 5 um, and then just making sure that we're ahead whether it's in terms of strikes landed or positional dominance or whatever but Keir's like like some of the other fighters in, in the gym who's his fight IQ is fairly high he, he figures stuff out himself without the corner even having to inform him with that no, kind yeah. of stuff um, some guys you need to you need to let them see it but he figures that out himself so a lot of the corner stuff with him you, don't even, you just let him go um, so he's, he'll be comfortable when he goes over there man. I think he's going to enjoy the whole experience like he was saying the EFC guys always treat you really well it'll be probably the first time he's felt like a, a professional athlete uh-huh. um, the They'll do stuff with him over there and stuff. You'll you'll see his name up in posters and and, and stuff like that. And he, he's fighting in a big casino, obviously, so he'll, he's going to enjoy it. How's that going to be seeing your seeing your name up in posters and your picture up in posters? That going to be a bit serious. Yeah, I think it'll be cool. I'm actually I'm, I'm the the co-main event for this show. My right. title fight is the main, and uh, obviously it's the we got my guys' experience. A fan favourite from what from what I've heard. Aye. Uh, so they've they've stuck me in the, the co-main event. I think that's. I think they can see the potential that I've got. Uh-huh. You know, like uh, Danny came in, won the belt. Callum challenged for the belt, so I think you know we're not coming over just to be someone no. involved. I think that's why I've gotten a more experienced opponent. It's more, you know, is she going to get back on track and, and push the title, or am I going to be the new kid coming in, the next Scottish guy coming in and pushing towards a, a belt? So it's good matchmaking. Right. Always seems to be good matchmaking with the AFC, but and, and Graham does put a lot of thought into it. Because, you know, they, they could have matched me with a lower experienced guy and maybe a lesser skilled guy and then I just get, uh, get maybe an easier win. Uh-huh. But, you know, this is this is a test where I'm at. There's a good EFC veteran here and I'm, I'm the new young guy. So it's like, it's a win-win yeah. for them, the outcome, you know what I mean? So, Aye. yeah, it makes sense. It's a sign of a good matchmaker, that, but they're not, they're not just making the fight for the sake of making yeah. the fight. They're making the fight not just <coughs> for that moment, but for future for both of you. Exactly. Because I guess in terms of the experienced guys, bringing you in and seeing what they've seen in you and the level they yeah. may think you are but they need to actually see yeah. see if you live up to that and then again for him it's can he get himself back on track yeah, yeah, yeah. and he's obviously been in there against against good guys Pierre Botha and stuff like that yeah. so so it's uh, it's definitely a good fight mm-hmm. um, and it should be it should be a fun one but uh, EFC see, that's just always a sign of a good matchmaker I think when they think a few fights in front I need to. Mm-hmm. He, I've actually been in Graham's office a couple of times and he's got a, a whiteboard the size of his wall and it's got all the show dates and it's it's like mind maps eh? he's planning bum, bum, this guy wins we'll move him to, and he's like he, he isn't he just one of the guys that that flings fights together he's got a plan right. he's always got a narrative in the division as well like like you said this this fight if Keir goes over and beats this kid it, it pretty much puts that kid right to the bottom of the pile but yep. if he if he gets a win over a, a good international opponent it, it propels him forward Keir's going to be really marketable over there, like a young, hungry fighter coming in. The same way Danny was when he went there. Um, and the, the, his style in, in that featherweight division. And the, the division's pretty wide open there because Cabeza's away, Boyd's away, uh-huh. and stuff like that. There's a couple mainstay guys there, like, like both and stuff that he mentioned. But it, it's good timing for Keir this fight. It's a, a good test for him. 
one that he's, he's more than capable of getting over there and, and again he, he can win however he chooses if he, and he's going to turn up on the night like always and it's not going to be an easy night for, for the other guys so the, the timing is, is, is really good for him he can do this one then chill for a wee bit of Christmas and then get a big year next year when, when travel restrictions and stuff is even a wee bit easier and they're relaxed uh, you, do, you just feel as well not to be too disparaging to Bellator but when you look at the, the way they set things up you don't see that that progress and structure for guys coming in it's just you come in you fight you win or you don't win and then mm. it feels like there's no a plan B for what happens next so we EFC that seems to be in place there's also so, the new EFC there's there's a bunch of the guys going to UFC now yep. straight there like you've had like JP Baez you had uh, Don Madge obviously the Drickus the, the middleweight champions there uh, that DACA champion guy I think a light heavyweight boy so there's five or six of them there's even been a bunch of them on the contender and stuff like that as well so there is a there is a pathway there that's that's similar to the Cage Warriors pathway like if you if you stand out in that show they're, they're obviously watching it um, and some of the boys are doing fairly well in the UFC like, like yeah. Drickus is and stuff so the, the stock for the rest of the the, the promotion gets higher the, the better they guys do so it, there's nothing to stop Keir going over there and, and getting four or five fights taking his record up to nine and one or whatever the way, the way Danny did and then signing for the UFC and, and the good thing is the EFC want that they're, they're not like some of these other promotions that'll hold you to your contract or whatever they've, they've gave Keir a contract where he's he can fight anywhere he wants outside the Africa so uh-huh. he, can, he can come back and go to Cage Warriors he can go to Bellator as long as he's exclusive to EFC in that, that region of Africa um, yeah. and again that, that shows that the guys want the best for the fighters they're not restrictive they're not like insecure about he comes here and wins the belt and then and then buggers off they want they want guys to go through UFC and, and build their brand through it maybe going to the UFC Aye yeah, it does it seems like there is a clear structure now for, uh, for EFC and obviously the other good thing as well is the, the promotion know the gym really well uh, and obviously guys that have went out on a higher level have done extremely well over there uh, so it's just good good to see you uh, now yeah. coming through and making that it's actually good for the, the, the gym as well because we're now you'll know yourself we're now starting to see that crop of younger fighters now breaking through early professional ranks and starting to make marks in the professional scene yeah. so the future's the future's looking bright for the gym I, th- uh, I think we're going to end guys. up with a bunch of guys there. We were meant to have, at one point, we were meant to have four of them going over. Um, it's, it's kind of whittled its way down to just uh, Keir now. But we have got a very, very good relationship with, with that promotion, just <coughs> just through being honest with them in the past and then just try to make everything as easy for the promoter as possible. So yep. you know, it's, it's always a two way thing with promoters. Some of them will just want to take everything about what you can do for them. But with those guys, we always try to make stuff as easy as possible with them. Try to do everything they asked us to do. And then they always knew when any of our guys were going over what they were getting. They were getting somebody who was going to come out and, and, and put on a show or, or fight their heart out. They were not getting duds. Like yep. Guys going over and, and and not being well prepared or, or whatever so it's kind of paid off for us in the long run we've got, we have got a good relationship and I think we've we're going to be working with them quite a bit next year hopefully that's good and it's if you look back at the fights uh, the, the guys Callum and Danny have put on and uh, there's been extremely good yeah. fights there uh, so you can see why the AFC promotion are uh, happy to work with you it's funny about how they speak about Danny like he seems to be like a legit star out there aye like everyone Oh, that's Danny Henry's camp. That is Aye. old Danny Henry. Like, he made a big, a big mark over there. Aye. Like, legit, I think that, like he is like a, a star over there. Like more than like UFC fighters. It's funny to see everyone. He, he was like champion yeah. there when that show was at its highest oh, viewing figures. It was on terrestrial TV on the start of the night. Um, that Carnival City Casino had like nine thousand people at it for Danny's fights, and he was when he was main event that. Um, and it's it's just the fights like even Aye. even the fight he lost against Cabeza he, he won the fifth round he taken an absolute shit kicking for four rounds but he's just <laughs> a stubborn hard bastard yeah. who's like you're, you're not beating me um, and, the, and the Boyd Allen fight as well so these guys were already established big names over there yep and, and Danny's went there and just like, like put it right to them so it's even like his attitude as well I like they like he always had a bit of chip on his shoulder Aye. a bit of attitude with them I think they like that it's that bouncer's but, attitude uh, they like someone that comes in and you know stands out and not Aye. just the, the, the typical answers and just puts on a ball he went out he fought to finish and always had a bit of, a, a bit of an attitude about him and that's why 
I think that's why he was so loved. And then you've got Callum Murray. What was it? What's the part? <laughs> wait, 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 can't remember this. What's the part that was in the gym for a while? Some today we are played face. Played face. Such a played face. <laughs> I, I honestly I'd only push myself when, he, when, when I said that that was brilliant and obviously Cal myself uh, I mean what he'd it's just a character back. on his own doesn't uh, he try <laughs> broken arm and still still, still uh, going yeah. uh, so uh, it's, it's it's good to see it'll be it'll be a brilliant opportunity yeah uh, the you one know. big question I've got though uh, is what factor are you taking Factor, you know, funnily enough, mate, I'm, I'm quite a pale guy, but I'm okay in the sun. Right, see, so just like a wee bit of 15. If, that, if I put like one good layer of 15 on, I'm actually okay. It's more Kieran I'm worried about. I don't think he takes <laughs> no, the sun too. No, Kieran's Keir definitely, he's a factor uh, 50 guy. Yeah, he needs to be careful. Uh, there's no two ways about it. Um, so obviously, that's the 6th of, 6th of November. Uh, your fight's on in the EFC and co main event. That's, that's yes, brilliant. So we'll just uh, move on now to talk about the other that other three letter promotion, the the UFC. So we've got a we've got a big card coming up soon. Um, obviously, Kamara Usman, Kobe Covington, uh, the rematch is on. I mean, like Kobe Covington is a bit of a fucking idiot. Let's be honest, and he talks some amount of shit, but the guy can fight. He's he's a great fighter. And that first fight was was a fantastic fight. Do you, do you see this fight being any different to the first one? Do you think the switch for Usman, obviously, to Trevor Whitman, and we know uh, we know Covington's now moved away from the American top team. How, how do you see this fight playing out? I think Usman still beats him, to be honest. I think it, Covington's not going to have boring fights. Um, I think it'll be a long fight. It looks like Usman's just a wee bit too physical for him. He's a bit bigger, a bit stronger, hits a bit harder. Covington's not like a big hitter. And he's he can't out wrestle Usman, so he's got to stand up and strike with a guy who hits hard on him, who's a bit longer. So I'm, I'm going to I'm I think nobody in that division is touching Usman. I think um, I think he wins it. I I think it might maybe even be a wee bit more convincing. The, the last one wasn't mega competitive. It was right. it was a bit of one sided but beating, but it, it was impressive because Covington hung a bit. Yeah. Um, I think Usman wins it, but I think if, if they fight ten times, you win probably nine and a half times out of ten. It's, it's just that part of one of the things Covington does with guys is he just he sets a pace that generally they kind of keep up with, and it doesn't seem like that. That Usman can. Usman can, can. Yeah. keep up with, him and he's bigger, he's stronger. Uh, his his jab was he's brilliant he's, last time. The I, more time he spent with Whitman, the better as yeah, well, because yeah. he had some good fundamental striking from for working with Henry Hooft. Um, yeah. He, he tends to turn aggressive wrestlers into very good boxer wrestlers and, and I think just going to Whitman's going to polish that a wee bit even more so I, I, th- I think the time for the last two fights I'd imagine Usman's improved more than Covington has I think Covington's yeah. probably set up a camp with, with yes men running about him yep. so he's controlling who's the coaches and whatever but I think ultimately he's the boss where with Whitman he, and Usman's gone into a camp where you've got Gaethje and stuff like that there um, and and they know like Whitman's the, like the boss in that camp, so he's and he he just seems the type of person that wants like a head coach to tell him what to do. So I think that's another factor. Like, Whit, Whitman's probably one of the best coaches in, in the sport, to be honest. Um, yeah. And I think Usman will, will be a very very good student under him. Covington looks like one of the guys as well. Just see his body type, his size, and obviously when you see him next to Usman, he doesn't look big, but Usman is massive. Yeah. But Covington looks like a guy that would maybe benefit from a one sixty five division. Yeah. I think that's more his thing. He, he doesn't cut a lot of weight. He just yeah, to keep the he's, pace. he's fit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think you've nailed it. Like you've hit on the head there. Like Kobe's went from a, a high level gym to a lower one, mm-hmm. and Usman's just added a world class coach. Yep. You know, you've seen it. He finished Gilbert Burns with a jab. Yeah, he's not. I, I mean, Masvidal is. For you know, he's he maybe got a lot of losses, but he's a he's a clean striker. Yep. Not him clean out. He's, he was never really not like he was putting the, the pace on guys before. Now he's knocking them out. With his hands, and I think that'll be a big difference in this. Like, there was a lot of kind of sloppy exchanges before. I think Usman will be, uh, will be just clean and more technical. And he's got the mental edges beat him, you know All what right. I mean? Like, they went to war and he done them there. So, I think you'll always have that edge on a guy. You know, you look at you, you know, you've beat them, you've you've been in deep with them, and and you came out on top. And since right. then, he's become a dominant champion. And, and Kobe's barely fought, you know yep. what I mean? So, yep. That that alone, that you the, the just if you're streaking and right. you've got the edge over the guy and you've added this coach, I think everything's in 
in, in Usman's favour, honestly. Yeah, and it's 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 not just beating him, he beat him with a better stamp on the end yet, because he really, I mean, he punished him. And mm. it was, can't recall, it had, was it a broken jaw? Aye, the ref had to saw. save him. His Aye. jaw was slapped on it. Which is, I think that's one of the reasons he's not fought in a while, but he's also been quite smart and just sat out waiting on a title shot, because yep. I think yeah. he, he could have put him in with Burns or or Leon Edwards and he, he could have maybe dropped that fight yeah. but he's, he's played it pretty smart so I mean, normally the, that doesn't benefit you to wait out and get the title shot but I think maybe because the fight the first fight was so good Aye. and because of how Colby is and it's a good back and forth it was it made sense to, to, to go for it it's got, there's got to be some psychological things there as well with getting your jaw broken because that's that's not a, a fun injury to get. That's that's quite a bad one. That, there's got to be something in the back of your mind that thinks about that. Mm. Uh, and then you've got to imagine Co- Covington's looking at it as well. And he's got to see the progress for this one as well. So it's like you say, he's no fought. Mm-hmm. And this one's just got better, more yeah. dominant. We've seen him um, getting hurt against Gilbert Burns and then coming back and just almost like big brother in them yeah. in the fight. Uh, so I think Usman is probably one of the most dominant champions that we've got now maybe out with what, Shevchenko I think Kobe's the only one with a chance to beat him I think mm. uh, right now and if he can I don't see anyone beating him nah I think you're probably they'll probably look at maybe depending on what happens with Edwards that's that's a fight that mm. probably if, if Edwards keeps winning yeah Edwards, uh, Cam, Edwards getting Masvidal next yeah he'll beat Masvidal yeah I think so um, but he won't, I don't think he beats he need Usman to turn up on a really bad night I think right and then um, Kamzat obviously uh, Shemenev he's basically staying 170 now for, yeah, for what yeah. they've said so I'd imagine he's probably in the pipeline but out with that I can't off the top of my head I can't think of him that's because Usman's else. beat everyone you know what I, I mean he's, he's literally just, he's GSB the division. yeah he's beating them all but uh, so we've got uh, the co-main event of the, the fight then we've got uh, uh, Wei Li uh, against Rose and Amadunis obviously we, we didn't get to see much of that fight in the yeah. first time it was a beautiful finish for Rose I don't see the fight being the same this time uh, but thoughts how do you I've got Amadunis winning again aye, aye. Uh, it's just too slick I think uh, you know what you're getting with with Wei Li um, I think Again, it's the Trevor Whitman thing's a massive thing. He he game plans better than anyone you've seen. What he's done with Rose, she went for. She was regarded as being mentally fragile at one point yep. in the sport, yeah. and she's went for there to beating Joanna and JHX and stuff like that, and then what, beating Zhang first time. So, I, I think she wins. I, I think she'll stop her again. She she gases this. She Aye. she's not a very great good five round fighter. I think she's exceptionally good for about a round and a half, and then she starts to to slow down a wee bit and. I think Rose will just be too her, her footwork and stuff just too much for on the angles she she hits her and stuff I think she should win that probably with a late stoppage or, or maybe on points but yeah. I would be surprised if she didn't win Aye Ro- Rose is definitely you can see, it's almost like you can see the but she believes in herself Aye She well, it, it Tends to be herself aye. more than the opponents and that that how, that's just such, such seems like such a big thing for a fighter having mm. that Really having that self belief. Obviously, a lot of fighters will say it out, outwardly, but may not think. But she seems to now. She mm-hmm. seems to now believe what her coaches and obviously Pat Barry and stuff like that believe, and that's yeah. that seems to be shown in how she's fighting. And I do believe Willie really, Jai. She will want to win this. You know, sure. she, she was the champion, defended. She will be feeling the same. You know, like she was meant to be champion. So they both are strong will here. But I do. I think Rose is just too. It's going to be too slick for her. I can see it being more competitive will go longer you know she's going to be a lot more switched on but it'll be a decision for Rose or, or stopping her late like maybe even summon her this time round uh, you, you'd imagine as, as well for Wei Lee probably her coaches are saying to her because obviously she get, she get finished early in the fight but they'll be saying the, ch- that was, the chances of that happening again are pretty slim yeah. they'll be putting her head maybe it was just, just luck that, mm. that that happened but uh it, it's, a, it's another good fight a really exciting fight and I, I just like watching Rose and in this fight just I like, I like watching her fight I like watching her interviews yeah. she seems like a really good person and uh, it's, it just tops off a, a really good card Yeah, because obviously underneath it we've got um, Michael Chandler My and friend. Justin Gaethje mm-hmm. Is that is that is that going to be the fight most people will be looking at and going oh, that's, that's, that's potentially the fight of the night yeah I did, they know what they're doing they oh, do that for a reason aye, aye. that's two two guys that bring it two hard hitters yep uh, 
Oh, it is a hard one to pick, I'd say, but I don't know, I just feel like I can't see Gaethje. Well, Gaethje lost to KB, but again, another one of Whitman's fighters. I just, I can't see him losing two back-to-back. Chandler's coming off coming off that loss. And that seemed like if he was going to be the champion, that was his shot yep, to make it. Degree. And I could I maybe feel like he's maybe a bit mentally beating himself. He, he almost had Oliveira beaten, he still couldn't do it. And he is more of a, he's, he's quite technical, but it's wild shots. I think Justin O'Gaichi will come in, be smart, and probably probably wear him out and finish him later on. But God, Chandler's like a gorilla. He could get him. Aye. Is, he could, he could get him. It's a hard one to pick that. Now, Mason, he's obviously his debut fight against Dan Hooker. He's mm. extremely dangerous. And Justin is obviously a guy who does get hit. Mm-hmm. Uh, but the low kicks, he's powerful. It's just it's another really good fight. Uh, what do you think of the fight, James? I think any time you see Gaethje on the card, you know it's going to be a good fight regardless. Mm. Um, mm. I think that, that is the best fight on the card for me. Um, I've, I've got Gaethje winning as well, but it's one of those fights where... The two of them carry that, that knockout power. If one of them makes a mistake, the other one's going to go. I think it was, it'll come down to who starts to tire first and whose pu- punch resilience goes uh, quickest. Because gaethje has been done with that before. He's lost to, to Poirier and stuff like that, and he's been winning the fights. But if Chandler can stick around long enough and, and get him tired, they can maybe take over. Um, but it's easier said than done sticking around with Gaethje. And he's looked much improved as well. Yeah. The, 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 you yep. can't take much for the Khabib fight because it was Khabib but oh, yeah. his defence has got better I remember it used to be like a running joke about him not having great yeah, defence and, and he would openly say I'm here to get bonuses and I'll deal with whatever happens with oh, yeah. CTE and whatever after it but if you look at him technically his defence has improved massively and again it's, it's probably due to Whitman yeah. um, he's, he's not a daft fighter he's, a, he's an intelligent intelligent fighter so I, I'm, I, I think it's Gaethje's fight to lose for me yeah um, I think he goes out and puts his the, the style wise they're, they're very similar they're both yep. pressure guys but I think he's just been in the better opposition for me I think I think Keir kind of nailed it a bit with Chandler's come over for the UFC and he's and for Bellator and he's went he's a one and one or something in the UFC yeah. so yeah. he's probably thought coming over here I was run through everybody because he was regarded as one of the best in the world at the weight but if you get into the UFC and, and suddenly you're one and one, you're like, like maybe this is a level above wh- where I was at before. So and it'll be a good fight, I think. But I th- I've I've got Gaethje win that, um, but it will come down to who who starts to fade the quickest with they two because they put their, their output so so intense. They can neither of them can carry that over a fifteen minute period. Um, but but Gaethje has started showing a wee bit more discipline with it. But, uh, yeah. and there was that fight where Whitman was telling him not to put take, take yep, a bit take of your punches take a bit mm. aye and he'd done it and he looked he looked so much better and that was the fight where his defence looked improved as well so I think he's got that in his game now yeah. whereas I don't think Chandler has um, and, and Chandler's coming for the, the the team we mentioned earlier with Hooft and, and uh, his guys have never been defensively brilliant they're, they're very very offensive wrestling big punchers uh, they don't really con- if you look right through his whole team they don't conserve energy they, they yep. expend it when, when maybe they shouldn't so I, I've got Gaethje coming out and being, being smart enough just to apply the pressure Aye. and let Chandler maybe fade and then and then get him out of there it can't yeah. be a bad thing as well to you know, have Kamaru Usman in the gym you know he's going to have like, even if they're, they're mates he's going to s- stuff's going to sneak out um, Aye. it's not like you need it to be honest both of them are for that many fights Aye. Yeah. you kind of know what you're getting with them but even if he's just if you're just he's sparring against Kamaru Usman if they're doing that that's a benefit I mean you'll know yourself as a fighter the better level of guys you're in there sparring mate it, so. it just only improves you it's like yeah. anything um, the, so there's that and then uh, that, that's got to be a massive benefit just having Usman in the gym as well um, and I've just had to check the, the rest of the card there because you've got the two other fights you've got Burgos against uh, Quarantilo I don't know that much about Quarantilo or Qu- I've probably fucked up his name Billy, I Billy Q I think he's called yeah Billy Q oh, that's right, a so. fight that's a style fight aye um, they've went it seems like they've went all out with that card this, the card the week before was big obviously but aye. this this is a this is like a showpiece card eh? um, they seem to have picked every main event fight on paper should deliver something uh, stylistically they're matched up well you know what you're getting with both of the guys they're both big hitters come forward they're, none of them are going to look to wrestle each other yep. um, 
but, but I've got a bit of a soft spot for Shane Burgess he's one of my favourites yeah um, right. he, he kind of signed with the UFC about the same time as Danny and I kind of always kept an eye on him um, and he's just a guy I really like to watch I like his team he's for that Tiger Shrewman's gym oh, yeah. um, they're, they're underrated and I'm looking forward to it I think, I think Shane Burgos should beat Billy Q but yeah. it's, it's going to be an exciting fight that one uh, and then kicking off the main card we've obviously got the, the legend himself Frankie Edgar uh, against Marlon Vera uh, it's an interesting fight but for me I can't just help thinking is it it feels to me like Frankie Edgar's time may have been it's a crazy start to it, say honestly <laughs> and, and, and the way he's, career, he's went when you think of fighters careers it's just weird the way his has went because mm. how often have we seen a guy go well, we see it all the time a guy maybe go for welterweight move up to middleweight Aye. and so on and so forth but then for a guy to be so successful at lightweight and be a very small lightweight mm. but then move down and down again yeah it's just it's very unusual I know it is, it is. Get, he's, I love Frank Edgar I love watching him fight uh, but it's just it's one of the fights Marlon Vera's a very good fighter um, it's I don't know that I'm too excited to watch this one it's purely because I like Frank Edgar and he's getting to that stage of his career where I've kind of watched his fights with with my hands over my face I think a wee especially bit. that Corey Sandhagen lost like he came yeah. down to Bantamweight got a win and that killed his momentum even just like that was a bad knockout yeah. again this is like typical UFC matchmaking it's a, a legend on the way down versus a kind of perennial contender is he going to get the yeah. big win on his on his record and move up you know they're always making these kind of fights and it's funny I've never actually watched too much of, of Marlon Vera but everyone seems to really rate him like, like championship potential in the future trains with, with a good gym yeah you're right if he goes out and just fights fights smart it, it should be his fight but again right. you literally can never write off Frank Edgar uh, like you, uh, you can't you know he might rise to the occasion so he, a good one he, even Marlon Vera now that I think back is well, he's actually been about for quite a while remember, he, remember he fought Pickett and that, that was a while they, ago they brought him into London for Pickett's Aye. last fight yeah, yeah. And it did, yeah, obviously. It backfire him. I was at that show and yep. it, it fucking silenced the whole arena because he knocked up his starts him and then Aye. he's done some more recently with the Sean O'Malley thing. He, he beat O'Malley. Yeah. Yep, um, yep. But it's 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 similar to the fight we were talking about with, with Keir earlier. It's Frank Edgar gets a win there, which which is an upset, if, if we're being honest. Then it, it's Frankie's beat a good guy. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Vieira gets the win, which is, is more than likely then. He's, he's got another legend, can you name it? Or his first legend's name on his... Mm -hmm. his record I, I think Vera should win that uh, Frankie's got a lot of mileage yep mm. and uh, he's obviously some bad knockouts and it's not just the knockouts obviously you think back to the Grey Maynard fight yeah. I mean that's that's CTE written all over it <laughs> and that's <laughs> your, your head spinning for a few days after yeah. that they're, they're worse they fights with the Maynard ones and, and stuff like that are worse than the the quick, the quick yeah, knockouts because it's continuous at least Sandhagen and, and Mendes just knocked him out Quite, yeah. um, then Ortega they, as well they, I mean our fights he was dropped five or six times and he's getting up and everybody's praising him for his heart and all that stuff but that's the damaging ones that, that's the Aye. ones that, that maybe the ref should be thinking that's enough but. that was about ten years ago too that's yeah. like before I, I even know. started watching the UFC the that's fights were happening it's, it's absolutely nuts I remember watching them it was uh, they were brilliant fights but now obviously we uh, haven't highlighted with CTE and it's, the other thing as well is what I, what I think about he's obviously he's, took, he's had some bad knockouts recently but he has went for being a guy that cut no weight to now cutting obviously cutting weight mm -hmm. so that that's that's got to play a part in it as well. it's, it's one of the things in the sport he still uh, looks small at Bantamweight Vera yeah, will be bigger than uh, aye, aye, he's, uh, I mean mm -hmm. our, uh, Ed, our young Edgar could make 125 I would say Aye, and he's fighting guys like he was fighting Ben Henderson and stuff like that back in the day. Aye, big, aye. Um, he's a big guy. It's it's crazy what he done. It like if you to tell somebody who'd never watched him back in the day that he's a former lightweight champion, and then aye. you look at who the lightweight champions have been, you'd but no fucking way. But he, it, it just shows you how good a fighter the the guy is. Um, regarding the CTE stuff, have you watched him get an interview and stuff like that? He's still aye. pretty sharp and cognitive. But I was I've just read a book about CTE by a guy called. Uh, Tris Dixon a boxing writer and there's a bunch of uh, articles in that a bunch of research in that showing that some of these guys think they've walked away for the sport un unscathed and then it doesn't hit them to 15 or 20 years down the line and he's went and visited these guys in 
like mental homes, some of them mental homes, some of them in care homes and stuff Aye. like that in the early fifties, cause he fights like that. So it's he used to judge it on oh, he seems alright in these interviews and, and whatever, but th- there's there's definitely going to be a factor there with him with the fights you'd imagine going forward. Ah, it's it's uh, Disney bear thinking about, but <clears throat> I guess when you're a fighter, you just go to put that literally to uh, just go to switch that part off and just not think about it. Uh, otherwise, <laughs> maybe very <laughs> difficult to walk in the get in the cage. Aye, uh, it's kind of what you sign up for to an extent. Aye, aye, absolutely. So that's uh, it's definitely it's going to be a cracking card. Um, it's been a few other things I wanted to actually talk about. Uh, so Nate Diaz, he's on the last fight his contract. It looks like he's going to. Excuse me. Looks like he's going to leave. Yeah. Uh, the UFC, and I think the talk is obviously, uh, I hate saying his name, Jake Paul, uh, or boxing. But as we're talking about Frankie Edgar there, MMA and the UFC is not a place to get old. It just it's 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 very unkind to you. Mm. Nate Diaz at the moment because of the name he carries, it seems to just be getting thrown to the wolves constantly. So the uh, UFC will not let that happen. They, they've done the same with GSP there's a thing in the contract where if you retire they I'm sure it's like a five year thing it used to be longer yeah, yeah. Um, but it came out recently in that lawsuit where the, the UFC actually changed it in 2017 to um, it was a five year thing so the it, the way it worked with GSP because he had retired he'd wanted to come back and fight elsewhere and stuff and he had to come back obviously to the UFC and fight for the middleweight title uh-huh. but then he was still on his original contact track so they um they have to give you permission to go elsewhere and the, the way the contracts work is if you retire there's still a five year holding period with the UFC so D- Diaz is probably not going to be bought they'll, they'll talk about it and stuff but I'll be very surprised if it happens because they would need to do something similar to what McGregor done and the UFC got a cut of the money for letting Conor fight uh, Floyd Mayweather so well, it would have to be that as if a boxing thing getting involved with it somehow the, the only thing that differential with this one is because he's on his last fight of the contract and the UFC are co- o- obligated to offer him free fights mm-hmm. a year, if he accepts and fights out his contract, then effectively he goes free agent. Mm-hmm. So that's, I think that, but I think the UFC will try and keep him, unfortunately. The other thing the UFC can do is every time you turn down a fight, they can add six months to your contract. So aye. So they, they add time to it. Eh? So if, Just keep it running. Aye, you need to be, I, I get into the contract stuff recently with, like more into it when, with what happened with Stevie looking through kind of the, the, the kind of what's written in between the lines a wee bit uh-huh. um, and there was stuff in it that unless you get somebody knows how to read the contracts or stuff in it you don't really notice but uh, anytime you can you turn a fight down with them they can add six months to it anytime you're injured they can add time on it as well ah they're not stupid nah they're not they're, so not, they're, they, they're not going to let you go build a name for them and then let somebody else profit for it see you see he was trying to he was calling out Tony Ferguson and that's like a good Stylistic matchup for him. Yeah, I think if he was going to stay, they'd maybe try and match him favourably. But if he's planning to fight this and leave, he will offer cams that or someone like that. Oh, like, aye, aye. a horrible style matchup. So it's like you want to take it. You, want, you know what I mean? It's one of them. It's Nate Diaz. You might just say, yeah, aye, I've, I've, I've took a few beatings in my time. I'll take yeah, another one. Aye. Yeah, yeah, I'll take. I mean, <laughs> if the U.S. were being smart, surely what they do is you just try and rebook the corner Nate trilogy. Mm-hmm. Because as much as folk might think oh, it's not going to be a great fight, yada yada, uh, that will sell tickets. There's yeah. absolutely no two that ways two about biggest it. fights. That's what to come from a kind of yep. you know absolutely. among the the hardcore fans to like a worldwide superstar. Like, he's a superstar. And it's we it's weird with Diaz because obviously I, I don't like saying bad things about fighters or anything like that. But uh, if you're he's, how do I say this? If it's like a dick. He's lost a lot of fights and they've a lot See, of them. It doesn't matter, it doesn't really matter. I know, I know but how, that, that's it's, what I'm saying is it's yeah. really unusual. Mm. Because normally you lose, it's, it's very, very unusual. It happens with fighters. Yeah. Normally you need to be winning. Even Masvidal, his star rose, but it kind of feels like he's fell off a wee bit since mm. losing. Whereas Nate Diaz, he almost does the same to. I don't know, he's just got a weird cult following him. Yeah, it's Dick. funny, like, even against Leon Edwards, he got hammered. Aye. for four and a half rounds he lands one good punch yep. and it's like he won the fight aye, it's like to aye. the fans he was the winner you know I mean? and it, but then he, he, he wraps it up perfectly because what he says he's like oh, well if that was a street fight aye. doesn't matter if you won the first four rounds yeah. I got you at the end that he's means got I his won. own logic to it but he plays it well aye. He, he honestly 
you might think he's a bit daft, but he is. Like he knows how it works. He All can right. play the game well. Even like you know, you beat Anthony Pettis and just he was the whole, like the whole BMF belt. He just made that up. Aye. And then he's like, you know, there's a belt. They're all there. They totally built a whole show of it. If he didn't say that, that fight probably doesn't happen, and no. that belt doesn't happen. So he's even like back in the day, he beats Michael Johnson for some reason. He calls out Conor McGregor, and it just the stars aligned. They got the fight, and they were huge. It's like Aye. you can see. He is smart like that. He knows how to build a big fight. Aye, the, the one that always sticks in my mind is a cowboy fight. Because that was, I, I just, you watch that and you're like, ah, cowboy doesn't look, he looks totally rattled in this. He looks, Aye. he looks really, he looks like that hat getting knocked off and all that. Yeah. It's, uh, the Diaz brothers are, are, are I mean, they're fun, they're fun to watch. Yeah. Obviously, Nick's fight back was no, it, was, it wasn't the best, but he's been out for a long time. Mm-hmm. But, uh, Aye, it's, that's, I think that's about it. Is there, there's not much else. There's not much else. What else has come up for the gym? Obviously, Keir's front and centre of the now, but has fight. Uh, uh, after Luke. Keir, we've got uh, Cage Warriors. The, Cage Warriors. Mm-hmm. the double header thing, December, we look Stevie and Scott are all matched. Aye. Um, their fights should be getting announced pretty soon. Some of them are exciting. Aye. Um, and then we're still looking to get Dylan out somewhere. <laughs> yeah, somewhere. God. Uh, Terrible inset. <laughs> well, I can imagine that, that that in a room, Dylan and Luke. Aye. <laughs> but uh, I obviously look. This is feel, feels like a a really make or break Aye. moment from it. Really yeah, right. does. Mm-hmm. Uh, but obviously we'll, we'll we'll speak about that more Morgan down the line. But uh, we'll wrap on that. <laughs>